Well, welcome back to another Way Nice Photos video. And my good old mate, Pete Talk, well, he's actually having a little bit of a spot of bother with his Durace disc brakes. And uh, he's having premature failure of them. He's only getting like about six months out of them. Now, that wouldn't be so bad if the disc brakes or discs were not that expensive, but they're pretty, pretty pricey. You're looking at something like about 100 pounds, as he claims, for a set. So, you know, in a year, that's 200 pounds, which is quite a significant amount of money for running costs for your brakes. So let's just have a talk about brakes and the problems he's having and how that could be rectified and why bike companies really are reluctant to actually make these fixes. Well, really the number one problem here is cooling. Now, before I just get and get into actually disc brakes on bikes, I just want to talk about disc brakes that are on cars. Now, there is some fundamental differences because on a car, the actual disc brake actually has two pieces with actually a fan built into the middle. So what it does is it sucks air through the middle and is thrown out as the disc spins. And this is how it cools and gets rid of the heat. Now, on a, a push bike, the disc brake is not made like that. It's just a solid piece or in the Shimano ice technology construction, it has a aluminium core sandwich with stainless steel sheets on the outside. So we have a laminate type construction. Now, the problem is, is that these little discs don't seem to be capable of actually removing the heat enough. And what's actually happening is, is the actual materials in the expansion and contraction, because you have different coefficients of, of heating and expansion because you, they're dissimilar metals, you can actually have, you know, delamination of those actual components. And also, as Pete Talk said, you know, you've also got to worry about the heat traveling down the disc and actually into the hub because you don't want the disc in the hub because therefore you can have create all sorts of problems with your grease mounting, which would be the first, so you don't have any lubricant on your bearings. And also if the hub gets hot enough and starts to expand, you could actually have your bearings starting to spin and then your good old hub is bye-bye. Now Pete Talk, his actual solution to this is he's going to try and make his own discs and he's going to make them out of steel. Now this will actually increase the weight considerably and this is one of the reasons why manufacturers don't want to go to like a solid steel type of disc. Plus also they would actually have a rusty surface as you would have on car discs, which is a little bit unsightly and consumers may not be too wrapped in that. But uh, there is a number of other solutions that they could do. Now, one of the solutions that I think would be very viable is to actually make the disc bigger. Now, I know that people don't like running the bigger discs and even possibly even bigger because this is what people don't realize on the mountain bike world, you're not actually stopping from such a high speed and also you have a soft surface so you can't actually stop as quick anyway because your wheel will slide but on the road you have very good traction on your tire you're going faster and you can actually pull the bike up a hell of a lot quicker and of course this generates a lot more heat because a brake works by changing kinetic energy into heat energy you don't actually destroy the energy you just change it from one form to another so that disc actually has to dissipate the heat now, the problem I see with a lot of these disc brakes is the amount of metal in them is really low. And even with the ice technology where Shimano have sandwiched the aluminium in the middle, the amount of aluminium metal in there must, must be like, like minimal, it wouldn't even be like, you know, 50 grams. So even though they're saying that this, this works and keeps it a bit cooler, I don't really think it'll make very much of a difference to like a solid, a solid stainless steel disc. Now there is also another solution the manufacturers could do. They could actually make the disc bigger. Now what this would do is it actually increases the circumference. So therefore there's more material actually in the disc and the actual brake pad is actually covering more surface on one revolution. So you're actually getting more area to actually dissipate the heat. Plus the disc will actually be spinning faster as well to actually create more radiation of the heat away from the disc into the air. Now, the other advantage would be that with the hydraulic gain you get, they could actually reduce this because when you have a smaller disc, you need more force to create the same braking. So the bigger you make the disc, then the less force you need. 
And why this would be an advantage is then they could actually move the actual brake pads away from the actual rotor without actually having to increase any reservoirs in the hydraulic system. So this would actually be another advantage because then you, when you actually take your hand off the brake, then it would suck more fluid back and it wouldn't have that gain advantage and the pads would come be, be taken further off the disc so you'd have more gap there so you wouldn't have this rubbing so much. And also the, the actual other advantage is, is because it's dissipating the heat, you probably would have less warping or less heat cycling of the actual rim to a higher temperature. Now, I've been saying this for some time, and this is one of the reasons why I don't think disc brakes are mature enough yet. And, you know, the manufacturers are pulling the rim brake bikes out of the market and saying, hey, look, you know, the disc brake bike only, we've got this perfected. Well, this is actually showing it hasn't. And this is exactly what Chris Froome was talking about. He didn't go into it in detail because obviously he's riding those manufacturers' products. But uh, this actually proves that. And if you go and watch Pete Talk's video, you can see after he's done a descent, he releases his brakes, he rides away. You can actually hear it. There's significant rubbing of the disc, which is actually quite annoying. And even though it may not have any real wattage loss, it's actually really annoying because psychologically, you know, it's rubbing. Now, the problem I see with these disc brakes, and this is one of the things that's, that's always kind of stuck at the back of my mind, if you actually look at these ones, especially the smaller ones that people like to run, not the bigger ones, because people go, oh, look, I don't need that much braking. There's very, very little material in them. They're very thin and they're, they're very flimsy looking thing. And they just have not got enough mass in them to be able to dissipate the heat that quickly. It's, and this is what worries me because you have to get rid of the heat. Now, in the old days with the old rim brakes with the carbon, we used to get temperatures as high as 200 degrees because that's when the resins in the actual carbon start to melt. And that's why we used to have the clincher carbon failures because the resin would go soft and the tire pressure would actually blow off the rim because the actual hooks would then actually go soft and move away from the tire. Now, if the rim was getting to 200 degrees and the disc is so much more smaller, then we can actually really say that the temperatures would have to be higher than that because you've got a lot more force on a smaller rim, which has got a lot less material to dissipate the heat. So temperatures could be, you know, even double, maybe even triple, you know, with the, if you're coming down a big hill and, and achieving those same temperature or the same amount of heat that you're trying to generate as you would on a rim brake bike where you've got it to 200 degrees C. Well, in conclusion, the reason why manufacturers are very reluctant to either make a solid steel thicker disc or make the disc bigger is because it one, it adds weight, which everyone's very, very conscious of weight, especially with disc brake bikes because they're already heavier. And then the other problem is, is if you make the disc bigger, which would actually solve a lot of problems, it would actually less aerodynamic and no one wants that either. So the manufacturers are in this dilemma. And the other thing as well is, is they can't actually make the disc wider either and make it like a car disc where it has a fan built in because that would be too heavy as well. And it, it just makes it a lot more complicated as well. And this is what they've got to do. They've got to try and keep the weight down and keep the aerodynamic losses down. And this is why manufacturers are very reluctant to actually go this way and trying to keep them as small as possible. Now, just getting back to Pete Talk, if I was him, if I was making a steel rotor, I would personally try to make it a two piece. So there's one piece that bolts onto like a hub piece and I would actually use some screws and some mica to create a separation between the actual rotor and the actual the, the actual um, keyed piece that goes onto the hub because you don't want the heat going into the hub. And he even said this himself. And if you just made it solidly out of steel, you may actually find you get, might get quite a bit of transmission of heat into the hub. And I would probably be, I mean, it, it may be okay, it may not be okay, but you just don't know until then you have a hub failure. But uh, what I would do is, is actually make it a two-piece design and I'd actually put some mica in between the two pieces and just use a screw. So what you're doing is, is you're actually choking the heat from traveling from the one piece to the other. You've got an interface and you've also got an insulated medium in between. Anyway, that's my vid for today and uh, just letting, giving you an update on what I think about what's happening with Peak Talks Rotors. Cheers, guys.